Hello, this is Robert Adu with yaymath.org. This is Yaymath in the studio. I am going to be talking about how to solve logarithms and logarithmic functions in this particular video. Logs are kind of cool. I like them. Uh, they are a new type of thinking. And once you wrap your head around it, I'm sure it's going to be awesome for you and it's going to make a lot of sense and you're going to understand their utility. So let's just jump right in. Yay math! So first we have to understand what a log is, okay? First, let's talk this. All right. This is a true statement. Two to the third equals eight. Two times two times two is eight. So let's actually talk about it. The two we could call the base number. The three is the exponent. And it results in a certain number. We can call that n. This is my friend, Ben. Hello, Ben. What we're going to do is we're going to learn how to reformat these numbers into a logarithm. All right, we'll explain what that is. So you write the word log here. Every log has a certain base. This base is a subscript. It goes over here. The base in this case is two. Put that, okay? You do logs of certain numbers. In this case, eight, okay? Log base two of eight. That's what this is called. And logs, actually result in exponents. In this case, the exponent that we result in is the number three. Remember, logs result in exponents. The reason logs result in exponents is we need a certain math function that only churns out exponents. This is especially helpful for very large numbers or very small numbers. Something like 10 to the negative 20 or something like that, 10 to the negative 20. This is an exceptionally small number. But if you only focus on the negative 20, you can deal with the small number just as the number negative 20 and not 0.00000019 zeros one. That would be 10 to the negative 20. So we don't have to deal with that, just deal with the exponent itself, okay? So this is, again, the way we say it, log base two of eight equals three. Let's put it in general for, uh, terms. This is log base goes here, two is the base, eight's the number, n goes here. 3 is the exponent that goes here. Ben and Logbene, if you will. Logbene. Hello, Logbene. This is your friend Ben. Get along. So let's come up with uh, other logs and see if you can decode them. There. What is log base 4 of 16? That would imply 4 to the what is 16. Again, 4 to the what is 16. Some students, when they're starting out, actually like to write this in exponential form so that they can see what's, what's uh, happening because they're more comfortable with exponents coming into this chapter, which is fine. Let's try that once. So this is the base, 4. 4 to the something, which we're missing the something, which we have over here. We can call it, let's call it E. Why not? 4 to the E equals 16. 4 to the what is 16? 2. There you go. Okay. Another way to look at it, if you like a little story, this is the little 4. 4 grabs 2, like comes over here, and grabs 2 and puts 4, excuse me, 4 puts 2 on his shoulder like this, and it becomes 4 squared. The 4 grabs 2, puts it on his shoulder, and that result is 16. Some teachers call this turning it into the snail. I don't see the snail. I never saw the snail. I have no problems with snails, but what is, they, they think this is the shell or something. Uh, is anything with a big swoopy thing a snail? Like, what is this? Where's the head? I feel it's like I'm that guy looking at the cloud and I don't know what I'm seeing. Like, you see the horse? I'm like, no, I don't see the horse. Anyway, but if that snail works for you, four to the two is 16, that can work. Let's try this one. Let's try log base um, seven of seven. That's a good one. So seven to the what is seven? Seven to the what is seven? That would be one. In fact, would it be safe to say that any time the base and the number are the same, the result would always be one, right? We could even do it for any example here. This is log base 21 of 21. That means 21 to the what equals 21. 
and that would have to be one as well. That's something good to keep in mind. When the base and the number are the same, the exponent is always one. That's great. Let's try by Logbinet. I gave this on an Algebra 2 test. A small but vocal minority had a problem with it. Something like this. No, it wasn't that one. Let's try that. That's what it was. Log base 99 of 1. So, the reason it was a minority is that they didn't realize that it's just a simple conversion into exponents. If you wanted to turn it into an exponent, all right, it would be 99 to the e equals 1. All right, I got 99 exponents, and the number what ain't 1. What is this? You know, when the exponent is what, the number equals 1. That's 0. Anything to the 0th power is always the number 1. Anything to the 0th power is 1. Let's put that down. 5 to the 0, 10 to the 0, x to the 0, banana to the 0. This all equals 1. Okay, anything to the 0 is 1, including banana. Okay, so let's use this to solve some logarithmic functions. Let's try one, something like this. Let's go log base 8 of x equals 3 over, how about 2 over 3? That could be cool. 2 over 3. Yeah, that's good. So, let's turn this into an exponent and we can see what's going on inside. Snail it! <laughs> 8 to the 2 thirds is x. 8 to the 2 thirds is x. Now, multiple ways to solve this. One method is to use exponents to our advantage. Let's say I wanted to have 8 to the 2 thirds. Here it is. And instead of 8, I'm going to write, I'm going to write 8 as an exponent. Okay. What is 8 written as an exponent? Something to the something that's 8. I meant to put this 3 here. Something to the something that's 8, that's 2 cubed. As you see over here. All right, powers to powers. These numbers will multiply, resulting in 1. So that's 2 squared is x. So this becomes 4. All right? So the way to say it, log base 8 of 4 is 2 thirds. All right, another way to do this is to use radicals. In other videos, we talk about how the denominator of the exponent actually is equivalent to the power of the radical. Okay, so this becomes the cube root of 8. All right, and you still have this squared out here. You're welcome to do it this way as well. The denominator of the exponent becomes the power of the radical. So then we get the cube root of 8, meaning what number times itself 3 times is 8? We can get a fix on it. What number times itself 3 times is 8? And that number is none other than 2. 2, 2, 2. So the cube root of 8 is 2. We still have this squared here, and that's 4 as well. Okay, so multiple ways to solve these beasts. Okay, let's try different log functions now. Okay, so let's try to solve these two log equations. Uh, first, what we can do is turn this into an exponent and deal with it. So this is the base, one fourth to the negative 2 exponent equals x. Okay, fear not the negative exponent. If you recall, if you make an exponent negative to positive, the fraction switches its order, becomes a reciprocal. Okay, so this negative exponent becomes a positive exponent and everything inside changes up. Okay, that's based on this, this rule over here, x to the negative 2 equals 1 over x to the positive 2, okay? That's in a video called Exponents, if you want to brush up on that. So another method that we can do is, 
if x to the negative 2 goes to the bottom and becomes x to the positive 2 downstairs, that would mean that it becomes its reciprocal. So that's exactly what we did inside here. Negative exponent becomes positive, reciprocate the fraction. And now we have 4 over 1, which is 4, squared is 16. All right, x is 16 on this guy. All right, let's turn this into a exponent. 5 to the 1. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to write the 2x minus 3 first to go somewhere. So 2x minus 3 equals base to exponent, 5 to 1. Okay? And then that becomes 2x minus 3 equals 5. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals 8. Divide both sides by 2. x is 4. Okay? So then we plug in a 4 there and it should work out. And it does. All right, let's make sure. All right, 4 goes in there. That becomes log base 5 of 2 times 4 is 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 is 5. And sure enough, that equals 1. We talked about it. When the base and the number are the same, the exponent is 1. All right, sometimes they, they increase the difficulty and they go something like this. If it's greater than or equal to 1. Something like that. If that's the case, make sure that the 2x minus 3, the number, is the thing that's greater. Right? So all this is now greater, greater, greater. That means x is greater than or equal to 4 in this case. Not just x equals 4. Okay? And then, if it was less than, we have an amazing discovery. Let's say it was log base 5, 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1. We'll still solve this thing. 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. And you get uh, x is less than or equal to 4. All right? But here's a major issue. We have to make a conclusion about the numbers of exponents. So like if you have something like this, b and e. What I'm going to say, I'm just going to give you the rule right off the bat. This thing can never be negative. It can never be negative. Nor can it be zero. I'm going to give you a brief explanation. So if you have like 2, negative 8 equals like 3 or something like that, that would mean like 2 to the third equals negative 8. Assuming this base is positive 2, no matter how hard we desperately try, even if we made this 3 negative, we could try desperately to make this thing into a negative number, but no exponent, no matter how you slice it, is going to, or present it, is going to result in a negative number. You recall from this rule here that 2 to the negative third, um, it would be 1 over 2 to the positive third, which is 1 over 8, and that doesn't really help. So no matter what, this exponent will never be a negative result, nor will it be zero. There's no, nothing we could plug in here to make this result in zero, even if we tried like zero itself. Let's change the exponent here to zero, 2 to the zero. Even that, and that would result in 1, right? 2 to the 0 results in 1. So this entity, the number n, it can't be 0 and it can't be negative, meaning it has to be a positive number. So when you say x is less than or equal to 4, this thing runs the risk of being negative because you make it smaller. x is 4, smaller, less than 4, 3, 2, 1. And it's going to eventually become a negative thing. So we have to prevent this from ever being zero or negative. The way to do that, right here, the way to do that is you set the thing inside, the 2x minus 3, greater than zero. See that? Now I'm forcing this thing, forcing that to be greater than zero. And then you solve. You get plus 3, plus 3. You get 2x greater than 3, x is greater than 3 over 2, or a half. So you get basically a sandwich effect. If x is greater than 1 and a half and less than or equal to 4, you can write small to big this way. x, right, so this would work inside. It's good to solve those inequalities, just have a fix on them. Okay, great. So final two problems. The goal is to prove 
that this side equals this side to prove that this side equals zero, okay? Uh, they can kind of be kind of weird in the books that they say just prove it, right? So without really diving in and sort of dissecting what these logs are about, it can get confusing. So we're gonna unconfuse them, all right? So let's prove these two sides are the same. Log base four of 16, meaning four to the what number is 16? Four to what exponent is 16? Right, you could do four to that x equals 16. That x would be two for the visual learners. There you go, four squared. So this becomes two here. Equals two times log base four of four. You may recall we said a few minutes ago, anytime the base equals the number, log base four of four is the same as four to the what number equals four. And that number would have to be one. There it is. Two equals two times one. So they are the same. All right, one down. Next. So this looks a little intimidating, all right? Don't let it. Log, 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 right? Sounds like a lumberjack. You know. Log. <laughs> log. My, I feel my beard growing in right now. So rather than do it log, log, log like that, let's just go inside out. Log base 2 of 8. What is log base 2 of 8? That's the first one we did today. 2 to the what is 8? 2 to the what is 8? What is that exponent we seek? It's 2 to the third. Doing it. This is 3. Okay, let's bring down our friends. Log base 3. So that's here, that's here, equals 0, question mark. And then we have log base 9, chilling. Okay, log base 3 of 3. Oh, same thing. Log base 4 of 4, 1. Log base 3 of 3, 1. So that's log base 9, bringing it down. Inside here we have the number 1. Equals 0. Is it true? We should. Let's turn it into an exponent. Base exponent number. Base to the exponent equals 1. Is it true? Yes. Anything to the 0 is 1, including banana to the 0 is 1. So this is a true statement. Okay, I hope that really helped you. And uh, in later um, episodes, we're going to actually use logs to solve high-level equations. So, thank you again for watching. We out of here. Then I just cut my tree down. <laughs> log, 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 log. I feel like pancakes!